Now, as I said, when I first mentioned this in a Baptist church, I got into trouble because they said, oh no, God is the creator. Jesus is the saviour. Most Christian churches have so separated Christ as creator from Christ as saviour, no wonder many of the cults prosper yeah. and no wonder people can say, but look, Allah and God are the same thing so that many of the quote unquote politicians in the USA are, are Christian country yeah. technically, yeah. they think the same word. Yeah. And in fact, let's qualify this a bit further. Go to Hebrews chapter one. Now, you know why it's called Hebrews, don't you? It was written to Hebrew Christians. Ah, people who spoke the language Moses spoke. So therefore, the task of the Hebrew writer is to convince his readers about which person? About Jesus Christ. And he's trying to convince them that this Jesus is the person Moses spoke about. Correct? Exactly. Uh, would you read it, Hebrews chapter 1? verses 1 and 2 because of all the books in the New Testament Hebrews is the one that quotes most of the Old Testament read he verse 1 and 2 God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed here of all things by whom also he made the worlds mm -hmm. So God the Father yeah. has spoken to our fathers yes. by the prophets. Yes. In fact, you remember learning the Hebrews thought in parallel? Mm -hmm. We Westerners, we think in sort of yes. straight lines, yes. but the Hebrews think in parallel. Yes. So if I can expand it, God the Father spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, which of course is 2,000 years ago now, God the Father has spoken to our Father's sons through God's Son. Now. Read verse 2 again for us. In these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed here of all things, by whom he made the worlds. Okay, question. Does Allah have a son? Oh no, by all means he doesn't. No, you can read it in the Quran, yes. right? He has no son. No he, son. Nothing is begotten from Allah. No. And yet John 3.16, the key verse of many evangelical Christians who would even dare to think that God and Allah could be the same, is that the only begotten Son of God. Okay, so we can qualify from our Quran and from our Bible that they are not talking about the same person. No, we're not. Okay, so God the Father sent His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, and the last bit was through whom He did what? The world. Ah, so God the Father actually designated the task of creation exactly. to through and for mm. somebody who is called God the Son. Okay, so therefore, despite the niceness, I mean, you want to be nice to Muslims and you'd love them to be nice to you, the fact is, any statement that says Allah is the same God as the God of Genesis is simply not correct. It's not correct from the Quran and it's not correct from the Bible. Now, if you tell that to someone who's very firmly convinced Islamic, they may get mad at you but you have to love them enough to be willing to risk their wrath in order for you to be able to tell them the truth for one very good reason. You see, you studied at Baptist Theological College. Why did this Jesus become a man? That he may restore fallen man back unto the God who created him. Ah, you see, and you're trying to figure out who this God is, don't blame him for Zidane Hussain. Don't blame him for nuclear bombs. He made the world very good. Yeah. We sinned. Exactly. And from Adam onwards, that sin has spread out to cover the whole human race. Mm. And we're all afflicted by it. So the real history of the world is from top down to the bottom, good to bad to worse to now. And therefore, since we couldn't redeem ourselves, this God became flesh so that the following could happen. You see, all the way through Genesis, you read something very interesting. The wages of sin is? Death. What you do wrong, you receive a payment for. The payment for sinning against this Creator God is death. But this God is a just God. He has a rule which is well known. Eye for eye and tooth for? Tooth. Ah, now I'm sure you understand that and so would most Islamic people. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But the rest of the law that was given to Moses is life for life and blood for blood. So here is God's rule, put it in perspective. A good God made a good man who sinned. The wages of sin is death. How can we solve this problem? 
one man sins. Ah, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. If one man sins, the penalty can be paid if one man dies. Right. But this just can't be any man. You see, if any man is born, we sin. We're not just neutral. We choose to do wrong, and we all know it. Okay, so this man, Jesus, this God who became a man, Jesus, how many times did he sin? None. He's never accused of sinning in the Quran? No. Nope. Never accused of sinning in the Bible, right? And nobody could convict him of sin at all. Ah, one man who didn't sin chose to give up his life. Now this is the God the Bible is talking about. God who created, God the Father who gave the job of creation to his Son, which meant that this Jesus was the one who made us in his image. Therefore, if we sinned, who better to come to earth than the one who'd been given the task to make us? Because if he came and lived without sin, then he could choose to give up his life, and the wages of sin is? Death. One man sins, one man has to die. One man who sins has to die, but if one man who didn't sin dies, the penalty is paid. There's nothing left to be done. Now, this is what makes the difference between Christianity and Islam, and it's not something that Christians can boast about, because we can rejoice in it, and you must be willing to rejoice so much, you're willing to risk the wrath of an Islamic person by telling them, look, even Muhammad said he did not know what was going to become of him. But you know what's going to become of you, and I know what's going to become of me, because this God actually lived, he lived without sinning, he died, he died as a man, he rose from the dead to show us that he alone had victory over death, and now you, unlike Muhammad, can look forward to seeing God face to face, something the Quran says Allah will never allow. But you see, this God of the Bible, the creator God of Genesis, has made this provision so you and I can look forward to a new heavens and a new earth where there'll be no more death or taxes. Mr. Mackay, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Uh, we certainly have some, some more of, of talk about this whole mm -hmm. subject. Um, the viewers, listeners, um, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And we certainly look forward to seeing you, uh, to be seen by you in a very new and exciting program with uh, Mr. Mackay about science and about this awesome, amazing truth who is our beautiful, amazing Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you.